coming to you this evening to share a little bit of my reflection, uh, especially in this time of um, the, the coronavirus uh, pandemic. A lot has happened in the past weeks. Um, across Europe, borders have been closed and people have been asked to return to their countries uh, because of the need to mitigate the challenge of uh, this this virus that is spreading like, uh, like wildfire. Uh, we've seen continuous uh, growth in terms of the people who are being infected. Well, I'm not come to, I've not come to talk to you from a medical perspective because I'm not a medical professional, but I've come to speak from uh, an encouraging point of view, from a spiritual perspective, and I hope that you would find this helpful and encouraging in times as this. In moments like this, when we are faced uh, with the challenge of, uh, of such uh, pandemic, and uh, when the reports that we keep getting uh, seems to actually paint a very bleak picture, uh, it can create a lot of panic and anxiety and worry in the hearts of so many people uh, that will begin to wonder what happens to me, what happens to my family, uh, what happens to my loved ones. I mean, we've already heard of people who have lost their loved ones and that doesn't even send a good news to us. Uh, but in the midst of this, there's always uh, hope. There's always uh, a possibility to look uh, beyond the dark clouds and see a silver lining. And, I, and I'm reminded of uh, the story of uh, Ahaz in the book of Isaiah chapter 7. So I'm going to be speaking uh, from the a biblical example uh, where the king Ahaz was of, of Judah was faced with um, an impending danger. He was told that three nations were coming against him. Uh, they were more powerful uh, and stronger than him and they were going to completely annihilate him and his people. Um, and uh, the Bible describes that they were so panicked, they were so afraid because of this impending danger uh, that the Bible describes it in these words. It says that the hearts of the king and of his people were so shaken as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. But, but Isaiah came to the, king, to the king of Judah with four, uh, four instructions. And, and that's what I want to share with you. The first instruction is uh, to be careful. You know, he said to him to be careful. You know, uh, to be careful in a time of crisis is so important because our reaction should be based on reality, should be based on facts, should be based on truth. Um, when fear sets in and we lose control, we can easily lose control of being careful, of being able to pay heed or being able to take attention to what is happening around us. Uh, uh, and when we lose that locus of control from within, uh, then we can actually become an instrument of, of disaster, of destruction, rather than actually a disaster of help and construction. And, and the second instruction he gave after saying to him to be careful was to take, was to be calm. You know, it is really challenging to talk about being calm in the midst of the storm. Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, was sailing with his disciples in a boat, and when suddenly there was a heavy uh, storm, that came over it um, in, in the storm and you know, created massive waves and the boat was almost capsizing. The disciples were shaken, they were worried, but Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, was sleeping. And, and they woke him and said, don't you care that we perish? Uh, but Jesus you know, uh, asked, where is your faith? You know, uh, and he commanded the storm to be still. And, and the Bible tells us that everything you know, went down calmly the moment we are faced with the storm of this coronavirus and that's what the bible is saying where is our faith you know uh, uh, you know be calm you know uh, be still uh, and know um, that we will get through this be still and know that we will overcome this and the third thing he said is don't be afraid now fear is antithetical to calmness fear is antithetical to being careful uh, fear is a loss of control, it's a sense that we've lost control, uh, it's a sense that we've lost stability, it's a sense that we have lost, um, you know, direction. Uh, so fear doesn't really produce anything positive. Uh, and so in such a time as this, uh, we have been instructed, you know, uh, to, be, to, to not be afraid. Uh, of course, that is not saying that we shouldn't be concerned. Uh, I'm really concerned about what is happening. I'm really concerned about the elderly who are in a very difficult situation right now. I'm really concerned about the families who have lost their loved ones. I'm really concerned about my family. And, but I'm taking care 
that we follow instructions um, being put out by the health ministry I'm following instructions that we listen to the governing authority to do what is right in order to curtail the spread of this disease and that's what it is when you take care and uh, as opposed to when you are afraid because fear doesn't help fear makes you put yourself in the center and forget about community but we have to be thinking of all of that think about ourselves and our families and how we take heed to the instructions that has been given but also being calm in the midst of it and follow simple instructions and where you know that has been given to us uh, and the last thing he says is not to lose heart you know uh, not to lose heart we've gone through wars in the past and we read the story and thank god for the age of technology uh, we can stream and we can go back and, and watch videos of what happened you know over 100 years ago uh, of diseases that kill you know uh, millions of people uh, but in the recent years we've seen uh, that we've been faced with things like this and we've come out of it uh, there will be remnant definitely and so we shouldn't give up hope for the future uh, God is going to see us through this and I'm saying this as, as a Christian uh, in the confidence that I have in God that he will see us through and he will pull us through out of this um, let us remember that he is not away from us because the last instruction that God actually gave the king uh, in the midst of his crisis was a sign uh, of, of a son that was called Emmanuel, which is God is with us. And so we do not lose heart. We do not lose hope in the midst of this that God is with us. Uh, and, and I say also that we have to be careful not to conclude on things that we do not know. So many have said, oh, this is a punishment from God. And uh, we've said that in the past during the HIV AIDS uh, you know, epidemic and spread in Africa, a lot of people said that it was God's punishment on people. Uh, every time we've been faced with disaster, we easily will quickly to conclude that this is God's punishment on people. Um, and, I, and I'm saying, you know, uh, let God be the judge and let not us be the judge. At this moment, I think that we should firmly stand upon the truth of God's word and proclaim it to those who need it. Let us speak comfort to those who are disheartened. Let us speak peace to those who are in trouble. And let us be peacemakers. Let us be prayer warriors at this time for our nations. May God bless you in your ministry. May God bless your family. May God bless your community. And may God help our, our experts, our governments who are working around the clock to make sure that they hold their nations together in this time of crisis. Uh, we will pull through this together and may God